Babes Behind the Beats with Just Bowen and Bowie Jane. What's up, everyone? It's Jess Bowen with Bowie Jane here on Babes Behind the Beats on Adobe Radio. And we are so excited because today we have Victoria Asher, also known as Vicky T from Cobra Starship. Hello. In studio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Of course. No, LA traffic's pleasure. a bitch, but yeah. you know, you made it. You're totally here safe worth and sound. It. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you on the show finally. I feel like you and I have like... I. I mean, I know we've probably met in person, but it's one of those things where we, I just have always known who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we we come from the same scene, and I've always just like looked up to you. Because let's oh. be real, there's there were not a lot of women in our genre, yeah, in our true. scene, and you were always such a badass, like <laughs> such a badass. I remember just being like, God damn it! I'd see you like play on stage, and you just have such a great energy and ah, oh, thanks. You're so cool because so. you're on the keytar, right? Yes, yeah, keytar. Yeah, which speaking of which, let's just dive right into it then. Yeah, totally. Like, growing up, so you, you know, as we know, you've come from a musical family. Your dad is Peter Asher from Peter and Gordon. Your mom is also well-known. Like, you've come from this family that's very musical, right? Yeah. So did you grow up knowing, like, I want to be in music because of that? Like, were you exposed to music then at a young age for, like, tell us about that. Uh, well, funny enough, I was actually the opposite where I'm like, I'm not going to work in music, <laughs> even though, like, I mean, not because of anything, like, uninspiring from my parents. Like, my mom actually was, like, heavily art world yes. related. And, um, and then my father obviously was always music. And I definitely did music on the side. Um, yeah. My mom forced me to take piano lessons, which I hated. <laughs> um, and my dad working in the studio all the time. Like, it was really cool to be around creatives and to be around that environment and to, like, go on the road with my dad and wow. things like that. But it just, I kind of, I was so hyper-focused on film. I was like, oh, I want to direct and produce in film. And You knew that, that at, like, that young of an age <clears throat> that film was more your... Yeah, wow. I was finding myself like my parents would come home and I was like really young, like from parties or things. And I would be like up all night watching movies on repeat. Like I was just obsessed. Wow, isn't that interesting? Because wow. you studied film, didn't you, at NYU? I did, yeah. Wow. You guys did your research. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, um, and I like to mention that bit of research I just did. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's pretty fascinating because we know we were looking up, you've d directed a lot of videos and um, it's pretty interesting how... I guess the two worlds do collide a bit, don't they? Yeah, and the weirdest thing is that I even followed my dad's path in a way because, um, what, uh, sorry, side note though, the one thing, maybe this is a whole other can of worms, but I was just going to say, side note, the thing that's frustrating though is that like one, but and ending up working in music had nothing to do with my dad. But it's like in this typical thing that happens, it's associated. Oh well, she only got the band, the you know, the job yeah. in the band because oh, of her annoying. father, because he worked in music. I mean, it followed me later too. Just even when I worked with Britney Spears, it's like, oh, it's probably because her dad, and then thinking because he used to work at Sony, like crazy stuff. That's where it's annoying. like, actually, my entire career path has been totally separate from my father. Yeah. And also, why can't someone just be influenced? Like, it's like, if you grew up in a musical yeah. family, it doesn't mean that it was like, oh, he helped me do this. It means yeah. you forged your way. I mean, you might have you good ta musical talent like he did. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. true, so, true. Yeah. Like, I mean, I definitely, there was inspiring things from my father, but as far as like this idea of the connections and things that yeah. it had to have come from like someone in your family or especially a female getting in like because of a guy, right. you know, things like that. Um, those are things that are frustrating. Totally. But s what I was trying to say <laughs> is that my dad, he left university to go to America. He took a leave of absence because he had a hit number one hit single in America. Which is huge. Yeah. Massive. And, uh, and never returned. And I got asked to join the band because I had a MySpace page that I put music on while I was studying film at NYU. And Gabe saw my page, thought I was cool. I knew the bass player in Cobras through my boyfriend at the time. And uh, and so I basically told my parents, like, oh, this band asked me to join and I'm going to take a leave of absence from, from college. And my dad was like, well, I can't really say anything to that. Like, that's basically <laughs> exactly what I did. So. Yeah. He's, wow. He's like, I can't fight that. Yeah. So that's it's weird great. how that became. So what happened to film then? Like, you, 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 you were just taking a break from studying film, I guess. Yeah. The plan was just to take a break. I was kind of in like a freak out moment of like, what am I doing in my life? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, um, and 
got a phone call from Suarez from Cobras just saying like, hey, Gabe came across your MySpace page and thought I'd hit you up. Do you want to like wow. join a band and go on tour for a month or so? And I was like, yeah, I'll do that for like two months. And right. I came 10 years of my life. So. Yeah. Well, because so with that being said, I mean, you guys had so many massive hits. Was massive. it just a thing like you were like, I'll just join it for a little bit and then go back to school? Like you didn't expect it to blow up the way it did? Yeah, definitely did not. I wow. mean, we were very fortunate that like when I joined um, – we were like immediately on a tour bus. We did not do the grueling van hustle or oh, any of that. Lucky. Um, but I, I granted, I didn't make any money for that first year. You know, right. I, I survived off of per diems and food from the venues. Totally. Um, because we wanted to have a bus. We were like, mm, we wanted to be comfortable. We're gonna like choose comfort over exactly. making money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just immediately so fun. The whole scene. I mean, it was a totally separate scene from what I liked music wise growing up. That's what I was going to ask yeah. because I was going to say like, what did you like? Yeah. Growing up the music that you enjoyed and stuff. Cause it w the scene that both of us are in is a totally different scene than totally different. Like I think what I even grew up listening <laughs> to yeah. originally, you know, I was very definitely like indie snob, you know? Um, I, I mean, I always loved music, but more almost like in a kind of, a and R type way, like I was always like discovering new bands and finding them before people knew who they were because that was so cool. And, oh you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, and so I was always like showing my dad new bands. Like I remember, like before Modest Mouse were known at all, I was uh, psychotically obsessed with Modest Mouse, mm. and I showed it to my dad and all this stuff, and it wasn't really for him. But then afterwards, when they became huge, he was like. I wish I had uh, listened to you about my stuff. <laughs> yeah. I could have signed them or, you know, manage them or whatever. Right. But, um, yeah. So when did, because you had a massive hit. I mean, you've had a few, few but yeah. like that and they're pop. Like, yeah, they're still cool though. Yeah. You know, like really. So how did that kind of success come about? Well, so the first record was done entirely by Gabe with friends and stuff. And then he was like, oh, I'm going to form this into a proper band. And... And so then we did the other albums on the road. And, um, yeah, I mean, I guess the first big one was Good Girls, right? I, I, I was going to say it was Good Girls, the first yeah. real massive mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Um, Are we signed at this point? Oh, you yeah. yeah. So so when, we, when I joined and, like, the rest of the guys, Gabe already was signed. Right. So it was just from there. It was, like, making other albums and... Yeah, and you were signed out. to Decadence first, which was, right? Is Decadence, that? I I, it was like Fueled by. <laughs> essentially Fueled by, right? I think. I guess. Okay. So. I I yeah. I was used on like Fueled by Decadence. So it's, I think, that on the wiki. And, well, because Decadence, I think, was the imprint of Fueled by, right? It was like Pete Wentz's de yeah. imprint, I think. Yeah. I think Gabe would know that Gabe would know <laughs> yeah I know I'm bad with that stuff to him I was like I don't know I know that this label was existing like, but I just joined not knowing if I'd make a single dollar yeah you're like, I, just, I love it down for the experience I love that <laughs> I love that so much and, and you also, also did sorry you no. you like directed a lot of the music videos yeah so I did some of our music videos I wish I could have done more with more budget but I did like more of our kind of home video type ones that did not have budget um, that's still sick it was very fun and did like a lot of like on the road tour diary stuff. Oh, and cool. Like, and we did these Cobra cams, which I don't know if you've seen those. I remember that. Yeah. And things like that. I remember that. Yeah. With wow. our friend Jack, who was on the road with us and and just just like being able to collaborate and to make video content and stuff was really key for me as well, because film that was, was what you were studying. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was like when you left, you were like doing the film thing. So yeah. to be able to incorporate that into then your music life is like the best of both worlds. You're out there living your dream. And I was yeah. like, oh, I could still do this other passion that I was going to school for. Totally. Which is so sick. And yeah. the key tower is an interest. Like, that's an unusual sort of thing to be an instrument to be playing. Was yeah. it just because you could play both or like, how did you go down that path? I just always played piano. Right, of course. And yeah. I had not touched keys really in years when I got asked to join. And I literally was like, blew off the dust and <laughs> started playing the songs like crazy before I auditioned to be in the band. So, oh, okay. Um, so you just. But, but from there, it was just kind of like going from the regular piano position to like 
dangling. Yeah, it would be hot. So, uh, Wait, but like, did you decide that's what you wanted to do instead of just playing keys? No, it was actually Gabe. It was like a, we want a and guitarist. Yes. Like, okay. And funny enough, I was actually quite against it. <laughs> oh. kidding. I was like, how would I make a guitar look cool? Like, guitar? Mm, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you're like, oh. Cool. Yeah, I was like, I don't know that that's going to be cool at all. And then I. You pulled it off. I eventually embraced it. But I remember I was like telling friends, I'm like, oh, I'm going to play keys in this band. I was like, avoiding You didn't want to say guitar. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because to go back to bands and stuff that i like too by the way like the rentals were like one of my favorite bands ever and that was the first time that like made synths cool to me like i was like oh you can totally play like amazing synth stuff and it's cool because for some reason in my head i had that like oh if you have piano like i don't know you can't do that i don't know why i felt that way but um the rentals was like the first thing that sparked me and they were like cool little indie girls that were playing keys and violin and with Matt Sharp from Weezer, I don't know how oh, deep yeah. you guys go yeah, into yeah. stuff, but I was a huge Weezer nerd, so totally. um, so I think I was just like I just pictured I'd be like in the cute little mod dresses playing cool old vintage synths and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but then I embraced the keto. Yeah, he's like, I think you should play the keto. You're like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> and you killed it. I gotta say again, it was. I well, think it's, it's cool. It's so sick. And again, just like going back to there were not. I never saw women on stage in our scene like yeah. I grew up in our scene like once I started in a band and it was just like there's never women on stage mm. and it was so cool to see you on stage also like just again just a badass playing guitar and doing the background vocal like everything about you like your presence and everything was so great and um I don't know like I guess I just wonder did you feel any sort of like way about being one of the only females like on the road with like your band being the only girl in the band also yeah. like and again in our scene not having a lot of women around i know times have changed and there's mm. it still isn't great there's not a ton of women doing it but there's more but yeah. like were there any thing was it challenges with being the only female for sure and yeah. it's funny because when i joined i didn't think anything of it of course you're like I, one like, of the guys right was that yeah. kind of how you felt like i had to be one of the dudes yes and i yeah. had guy friends my whole life like i was always kind of a tomboy so it just made sense to me right. like if it had been joining a band with all girls i probably would have lost my mind to be yeah honest, but, <laughs> um uh, so i didn't think anything of it but then when once i was in it it was very quickly apparent like whoa, this is like such a big deal. Like every single interview, they'd ask the guys everything and they'd have one question for me and the only question was, what's it like being the only girl in the band? Yep. Really? And yes. I was so annoyed 100%. by it. And I you just said that too. Yeah. Every single yeah. question was yeah. that. And I'd just go, it's great. Yeah. And then because the guys would like make fun of me because like they're like, oh, good answer. And it's like, well, what am I going to say? Like, what, like, it's fine for me. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, and then... It became just clear that it was like, you know, everyone gossips on tour and stuff. And it's like, if I was hanging with everyone, I was the slut. Right. If I was not hanging with anyone, I was the bitch. You're the bitch. Yeah. yeah. So it was so like true. figuring out that balance of like, well, what? It, but then actually throwing away caring about any balance and doing my thing yeah, and like totally. getting criticized for like writing. I remember I rode on Travis Barker's bus all the time and like, and it was great. I was like, in these like really sweet tour buses yeah. Yeah. in an amazing bunk bed never had anything slightly romantic with him yeah. and of course everyone oh she's am I allowed to swear on this of course yeah. she's having sex with him <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was totally untrue and I, and I was just like yeah. I don't care what they say because I'm having a blast on tour think whatever you want and you if know? it was a guy yeah. that became friends with travis that was in another band that slept yeah. on his bus wouldn't yeah. even be a question no. right but because it's like oh how did she get on his bus and what are they doing yeah. it's always like and like you said it was the it was the pressure for me at least uh speaking of my experience it felt like you know i felt like i had to be able to hang enough with the dudes i had to prove myself that like well i could out drink you it became yeah. that yeah. type of thing too of yeah. like no i can hang yeah like watch me yeah i'm one of the you. boys i'm yeah. one of the dudes like i'm yeah. one of the guys um and it and but like you said at first it's like it doesn't you don't think of it it's more of like an in hindsight type of thing where yeah. you're like oh I didn't see the things that maybe now I can look back and be like oh maybe those were kind of those signs that I should have realized were not healthy being you know the only yeah. female in the band but at the time I was just like yeah oh I yeah hang. I mean there's plenty of messed up stuff it's crazy. oh yeah I'm sure that's a whole and other podcast like you, we could have yeah <laughs> like later you're just like wow like that's crazy that 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 was okay like totally <laughs> yeah. luckily not i mean 
I really got to say, my my band, they were not the creeps cheating on their girlfriends. They were not the jerks, like, having, you know, God knows what, like, orgies right. on, the ro- on the road. Um, That's great. They were all in long-term relationships, and they were, like, belly, w- they were well-behaved in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. were crazy and would get drunk and whatever, but it was, like. The no cheating, no, no hooking up with, like, bringing girls back to the bus and no. stuff like that. Yeah, no. that's There great. were plenty of girls that would come on the bus and be very aggressive towards them. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is also the not spoken about side because there are a lot of yeah. uh, crazy fans that will do anything they can 100%. to try and sleep with a dude in a band. Yes. Wow. We've seen and that. It, and, you know, it's always talk the other side of, oh, the band dudes are the creeps. Like, not always. Yeah. yeah. There are creepy girls out there. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, we've seen it, too. I yeah. get it. Yeah. I also wanted to talk about one other thing, which I truly love. Actually, I, yeah, I never have gotten to talk to you about this. So Orange is the New Black. You helped create, was it the title sequence yeah. for it? Yeah. So, like, what I'm seeing on Netflix, like, when I watched the intro of it, you created this. Yes. So. That is so <laughs> sick. Everyone who's listening, if you haven't seen Orange is the New Black, <laughs> which insane. most of you probably have, it's so sick. Thank and that title you. sequence is amazing. Yeah. How, how, did, that, how, how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah, so it was me and this director, Thomas Cobb. So we, would, we collaborated on everything, and we did all these main title sequences. And we did, yeah, Orange and the Black, Orange... Orange is the New Black was one of them, and it was all like incarcerated women. And so we asked in every take that we took of all these different women of like, you know, remember the moment that, you know, you knew you were going to jail. Like, remember being in jail. Remember the moment you got out. Like, things like that to like capture that emotion. And then it was just a matter of like editing them together and, you know, using both stills. And then they come to life, you know, as video. Uh, The one shot that we did forget to get were hands in handcuffs which mine are the hands in handcuffs <laughs> oh my gosh oh. really <laughs> that's oh, wow. funny um, but it was great we did it in downtown LA with like that place um, what are they called homeboy or something what's it called it's like they they hire people that have gotten out of jail oh cool. oh homeboy industries I think they're called interesting okay. um, but so it was cool because we got to shoot there as well so. oh. did you already have the like so when they give you something like that and say like make us the title track do they give you the song that it's going to or do they just say this is the vision like how does that they ha- they brought they gave us the song so you know um, the song yes um, and it, uh, the original idea was completely different we we tried several different ideas and like pitched different ones I kind of still like the original one. It was quite cool. Oh, really? I want to see um, this original. <laughs> yeah. We only have the deck for it. But um, but the shoot was, yeah, it was amazing. It was very emotional, like, seeing these women that had been through so much. And Wow. Yeah, was so really was this cool. a pitch situation then? Yeah. Like, and so you ba- basically competition for those who might not know. Everyone's yeah. pitching for the same job and you got it. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah That's great. so, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, another thing, sorry, I know we're jumping back and forth from no, things, fine. but this podcast, unfortunately, is not long enough for us to <laughs> deep dive into every uh, little detail. But And I have jumped around a lot. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a lot. You've That's done a lot, is. which is amazing. Um, so, Cobra, you guys are like – would you say officially back together or is it more of a like you're because you're playing when we were young fest yes is there anything you can talk about well so all i can say is we're definitely doing when we were young fest you're definitely doing that okay great love that. hopefully beyond yes um but i think we are only promoting that you're only promoting that well (laughs) and also like just recently last week you know i I mean i guess i don't know when this airs but recently you were on um you just got on stage you and gabe went out with fallout boy as in like in the la show you guys surprise guest like show up on stage how cool so much fun i was gonna say like i remember seeing the video because i didn't get to go to the show unfortunately but i just saw so many videos popping up it was like the most viral moment it was like cobra starship like on stage with fallout boy like what a cool feeling it was so much fun oh my god i was so stoked because i i had just gotten back into town friday from new york and then gabe writes me on saturday being like how's new york and i'm like actually i just got back I was like, I'm looking for a new job. <laughs> like all this stuff. And then he's like, well, I got a job for you Monday. Like, you know, what do you think? Should we go out with, with follow-up? Boy, I'm like, dude, are you kidding? Like, oh, my God. I was so excited. So, um, so yeah, it was That's great. so sick. Which song did you guys do? We did Good Girls Go Bad. You did Good Girls yeah. Go Bad. That's wow. so iconic. Yeah, I it was really fun. Loved that. And what what's happened then with COVID for you guys? What what was that experience like? Were you not doing music or? Well, so, so Cobras, we actually came to an end, like, 2015 2016 right. something like that so so you were so we were not things. working on music yeah. i was at the time like 
working managing songwriters and producers. Oh, and, right. And then working for Britney Spears all during yeah, COVID what, era. What is yeah. that? <laughs> Tell us about this. <laughs> like, that's, that's random. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so, I mean, it's crazy because that's, again, another one one of these things where people are like, oh, she, like so basically when I started working for Britney, I had no idea the conspiracies that were surrounding that. Right. Um, no idea. Like completely oblivious. And uh, but so it wasn't until later when she started posting about me and saying s- saying her love for me, which is all very sweet, that I saw the fandom side. And there's the great fandom, the, the awesome, supportive, wonderful people. And then there's the ones that like buy into these conspiracies. And there were conspiracies of that. Like my dad worked at Sony in like the 90s. Right. Oh, and it's like, you think that my dad this whole time has been planning out a job for me to work for Britney <laughs> yeah. this many years? Like, that's insane. Are you insane? Like, yeah. It's it's wild the stuff that I see. Anyway, um, I literally just responded to a job post. I needed a job. Said personal assistant to a household name. That's okay. it. Oh my god! I applied gosh. to it. I first had a Zoom with the first assistant, and they told me then who it was. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I met with Brittany, and then I was working for her, and what? it was great. And wow. um, I you know I needed a job, and we I assisted her, and then. We became extremely close friends, and I think, I think too, part of what we bonded on is that we we're both women that dealt with, obviously, her to a whole other extent. Yeah. But it's like we both dealt with the madness of being in the industry, and and I mean, she was so sweet. Where like, I remember this one time when she texted me, she's like, "Oh my god, I just watched all your music videos. You're so cool. I can't believe that you've like done all this stuff." And I'm like, "Is this really you saying yeah. this to me?" Wow. That's and so like, sweet. I was too much of like punk rock chick to like be a Britney fan growing up. I wasn't like not a fan, but I don't like you know knew who she music. was, but or, wouldn't know the yeah, music. Yeah, you yeah. know, like the hits that were on the radio. Right. But like, we just bonded because there was no fandom. It was just yeah. like, yeah, we just genuinely loved each other. So it was really wow. Fun. How long did you wild, work for her? Uh, just over a year. Wow. Yeah. And That's, you guys still keep in touch and stuff, or you're yeah, still friends? Yeah. That's so cool. You like I've formed... made myself fully available to her in any ways that oh. she wants. So wow, <laughs> yeah. that is so crazy, and we did not know that. I well, yeah. no, because I will say on the opposite spectrum i am a huge fan like i grew yeah. up britney was my like you know when i was younger i mean i loved you know the insings the backstreet boys but as again like a female mm. pop star it was like britney spears yeah. was the one that i grew up for you me know. it was gwen stefani gwen I like stefani. Oh, okay yeah. alternative check but, yes but you yeah. know i i thought i mean i totally had an appreciation for it but again like wasn't the no. the fangirl situation i mean it would have been interesting seeing that side someone of that level of fame being on the other side of that and seeing yeah. the workings of everything, I imagine. But yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. She's she's awesome. That's yeah. so that's so sick. That's so cool. <laughs> the things you learn, you learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um. Okay. So before we wrap up, there's like some questions. We don't have to do the whole quiz, but there's Ooh, just yeah. the certain ones that I want to know. So I want to start with one question that we do, and it's very just on the fly. No right or wrong answer. Yeah. Um. Um. First one would be dogs or cats. Dogs. That is the right answer. Correct. Um, <laughs> I have three dogs, so. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're dog people here, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Whiskey or vodka? I don't drink. Okay. Really, tea so. or coffee? Uh, tea, because you're British. Coffee. Oh. Coffee. Yeah. Okay. Well, now tea lately, actually. So maybe I take that back. Now it's tea. I would have told you coffee a year ago. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm drinking yeah. a lot of tea now. Yeah. That's fair. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay. This one is kind of the one that's, yeah, you can answer it however you want, like, what you would normally put on a rider and then if you had any sort of budget like what would you put on the rider so like what do you first first question is like what do you normally like to have on the rider? fruit like fruit. a fruit plate like a yogurt totally that's nice into it. okay yeah. um reese's peanut butter cups Ooh, i like that the health the 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 balance yeah. <laughs> detox to retox yeah. yeah you gotta have a balance on there <laughs> yeah uh ultimate thing to have on there like anything if you could be like i want like a personal masseuse every day you know what i mean anything that a hundred percent yeah, yeah i know i was like well i gave you one that is amazing <laughs> um but also honestly like a chef like yeah that, like, you just had like whatever you were craving that day because i like chef. just crave food all the time yeah. i always said i'm like if i ever become really rich oh i don't need the big house i don't need the fancy stuff i just want a personal chef yeah and it can all be healthy then yeah not or not you know exactly what you want yeah exactly. you could literally one day be like i just actually do want junk food make me like a burger and fries or whatever <laughs> yeah, you know what exactly. i mean oh so that's a good, good one yeah yeah we've had some some random stuff i've i've put um 
dogs on the rider and it actually sometimes works i don't know if you guys have ever done this before <laughs> where like you go to a venue and if you do have dogs on the rider like someone that works at the venue Brings will just bring dog. a dog Amazing. and so then you're like it works and also you looked at the rider thank god yeah. <laughs> yeah i love that that's awesome yeah it's wonderful so anyways i feel bad it's, it's coming to an end we have so much that i feel like we could do like a part two with you because yeah. you have done so much <laughs> um but for everyone who's listening who might not already be following you do you want to give like the most active socials that you're on and just say like your ads yeah and all that? i'm yeah. definitely most active on instagram unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> same uh, at vicky t v-i-c-k-y-t perfect <laughs> no no tiktok or anything I, I don't yeah, really do the updated them. I think my TikTok is Dear Vicky T. Maybe. Okay. Okay. I don't remember. I haven't really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not on it then much. I'm really not yeah. on it much now. <laughs> to be fair, I can't. I'm still trying to grasp how to really use it yeah. in the sense of like, what do people care about seeing on this? Also, my algorithm keeps getting messed up. Oh, like, I and, know. It, and it always knows, like, because I dealt with like a terrible breakup last year. So it was like, it knew when I was broken up. So it was just all like, unsolicited breakup advice oh, that I didn't no. care to hear and now I'm in a new relationship and now it's all like how to keep him interested and I'm like why <laughs> oh, I wow. don't want to see this and I keep pretty, pressing not interested not yeah. interested oh my but god. I don't know how to like get it to actually show me stuff that I want to see so. oh my yeah. gosh oh my god well <laughs> good luck on listening that. to you yeah, yeah, yeah it's it so is. true yeah. it is so true well, thank you so much for being here, Vicky. Of we course, appreciate it. And you. can't it's wait so to great see you. To meet you. Yes. yes. And see you. See you and, finally yeah. again. And yeah. uh, everyone, check out, you know, co all your stuff. And also, you'll be at When We Were Young Fest. Hell yeah. And just keep an eye out for anything else that's happening. Because I would, you know, fingers crossed, I'm hoping for some more. Me too. <laughs> me too. I've been yeah. waiting for this for so long. Yes. Like anyone that followed me on socials, like, knows that I was going hard on, like, Listen, this for you Cobra back. is one of yeah. those bands that just needs to like, especially with this revival of our music. You guys yeah. needed to be back. Yeah, like there's no reason for you not to be back. 100%. You guys are like one of the biggest <laughs> bands in this genre. Are you kidding me? Insane. <laughs> Insane that you're not back. Let's go talk to Gabe about this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much, Vicky. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank I appreciate you. It.